Attack on Titan introduces us to nine interesting titans with unique movesets, designs, and characters who act as their wielders. However, the titans who had terrorized humanity within the walls for a century were not these flashy shifters, but a bunch of random titans who couldn't think or speak. Brought to us as monsters who slaughtered humanity for no apparent reason, the unraveling of the story brought to us the dark truth behind the existence of these titans and what it meant for the world we were witnessing. These pure titans were simultaneously at the very surface of the mystery, as well as one of the key players for the climax. What made this possible was the unusual anatomy that they possess. If titans were compared to clothes, the shifters would be the extravagant or rather flamboyant clothes that you sport during events and festivals. Meanwhile, the pure titans would be the basics, such as the blue jeans and t-shirts you absolutely can't do without. They are the bread and butter of the titan world, and if you think that basic clothing or bread and butter can help in the creation of flamboyant outfits or dishes, Dishes, instead of just being entry level in their respective domains, you're absolutely on the right track because pure titans do something very similar. But why do they play such a crucial role? Let's dive into it in this video. But before we jump into the heart of the topic, do like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all our newest videos. What are pure titans? How did they appear on Paradise Island? These weirdly realistic and yet unnatural creatures appear as antagonists in Attack on Titan. They are considered to be something akin to a natural neutralizer for humanity, which appeared out of nowhere and annihilated a whopping majority of the world's population. To escape their mindless slaughter, what was left of humanity secluded themselves within mighty walls that were bestowed upon them by the gods. Despite being safe from these titans, humanity still wanted to learn why these titans existed or how they came to be, and what their motives were because, ultimately, Ultimately, everyone desired a free world whether they acknowledged it or not. For this reason, humanity within the walls had a military faction known as the Survey Corps, who would conduct expeditions outside the walls to kill the Titans and learn more about them. For the longest time, these dangerous expeditions did not amount to much and only caused losses to human lives. However, the Corps did figure some things out. These Titans had no intelligence, they were mindless, and they did not have reproductive or excretory organs, which meant that they did not reproduce and they didn't need to eat. They could also not be killed unless their napes were sliced because otherwise they would simply regenerate. This began to raise questions. How did so many mindless titans exist when they couldn't reproduce? It also made us think as to why they ate humans when they didn't need to eat. The humans the titans would eat would just be regurgitated by them, so humanity within the walls assumed that these titans did not care about anything beyond mindless slaughter. At this point, the people did not make distinctions between intelligent and unintelligent titans because they always witnessed the latter, making pure titans the de facto titan type for everyone. As the mystery of the story unraveled, we found out how these titans with their creepily exaggerated humanoid faces came to be, and how they multiplied despite not being able to reproduce. These pure titans were once humans, and the descendants of founder Ymir Fritz, who had acquired the power of the titans after the source of all living matter attached itself to her spine. Due to their connection with the founder, the people experienced anatomical alterations that allowed them to turn into titans upon injection with the titan serum. The serum was generally the spinal fluid that belonged to someone from the Eldian royal family. Following the end of the Great Titan War and the fall of the Eldian Empire, several Eldians stayed back in the mainland, most specifically in Marley, while the majority relocated to Paradise and within the walls. Those who stayed back were used by the Marlian military in battle as they were the only humans outside the walls who could wield the power of the Titans. However, those who resisted Marlian oppression were taken to the borders of Paradise Island and injected with the Titan Serum. They were then thrown off the ledge as they turned into Titans, and the creature then roamed around the open fields that mostly led to the walls of Paradise. Meanwhile, the people of Paradise had their memories of the outside world taken from them, so they assumed that these pure titans were humanity's natural enemies. But of course, there's more to the story when it comes to how pure titans could even be created in the first place. How are pure titans created? We have mentioned how Ymir Fritz acquired the power of the Titans. This amp gave her unparalleled powers as the founding Titan, especially because she was the first of her kind and the only one of her kind during the time she was alive. At some point, she gave up on living due to her awful living conditions as a slave, even though she could attain her own freedom and had the power to do so, but her mind and her heart would not allow her to leave the tyrannical King Fritz. Having given up on life, she did not regenerate and heal herself after intercepting an attack meant for the King, 
who had kept her as a concubine, given her three daughters, and used her to expand his empire. Afraid to let the power of the Titans die out, the king forced their three daughters, Maria, Rosé, and Sheena, to consume the innards and, by extension, the spinal fluid of their mother. This allowed them to gain the power of the Titans. The process of passing down the power of the Titans by cannibalism continued, and every future Eldian who acquired the power of the Titans became a subject of Ymir. Meanwhile, Ymir was stuck in a metaphysical realm called the Paths as the coordinate, while the paths of her subjects branched out from the coordinate itself. With time, the nine Titan Shifters were born, and they were passed down among the Eldian noble houses while the Fritz family retained the founding Titan. As those with anatomies that allowed them to turn into Titans reproduced with other Eldians, their offspring were also born as subjects of Ymir, which gave the founder and the wielder of the founding Titan complete control over their anatomies. However, the creation of the Titan Shifters came to a halt after there were nine of them. As the founding Titan, the one who wielded such a shifter could use the power of the founder or the coordinate and turn subjects of Ymir, who were mostly Eldians, into pure titans. They gave the command to the founder in the paths, who then spent a lot of time crafting these titans from scratch. But, because time moved slowly in the paths realm, the transformation was instantaneous in the physical world. Due to the Empire's tyrannical nature, forced breeding became a thing among Eldians so that future generations of the ethnicity could be born as subjects of Emir capable of inheriting the power of the Titans. Due to this, almost every single Eldian we see during the events of Attack on Titan is also a subject of Emir. The Ackermans are the only Eldians and subjects of Emir who are incapable of turning into Titans. Let's assume Eldia is at war and, apart from its military forces, the general population also comprises of subjects of Emir. The wielder of the founding Titan can easily use the power of the Founder to turn all the subjects into pure Titans because they are connected to the coordinate. This, in return, increases the battle might of Eldia by a significant margin. This is why Eren was able to turn Jean, Connie, Gabby, and several other non-Shifter and non-Ackerman Eldians into pure Titans towards the end of the final battle. However, the method required to create pure Titans grew to become more complicated after the Great Titan War came to an end. Firstly, Karl Fritz renounced war, and his vows chained the future we wielders of the Founding Titan to his will. This also prevented them from gaining access to the Founder's true powers, because Karl Fritz did not wish for those powers to be used in combat or for destruction. He believed that his people should just accept their fates when they are attacked by the enemy nation due to how horribly they have ruled over the world. In conclusion, the Founding Titan could not randomly turn subjects of Ymir into pure Titans anymore. At the same time, all the Titan Shifters, barring the Founding and the Attack Titans, fell into the hands of Marley. They utilized their Eldian population living in the internment zone and made them wield the power of the Titans for the sake of Marley. Despite not having access to the Founding Titan or Founder Ymir, they found a way to turn people into Titans, using the spinal fluid of a Titan Shifter who belonged to the Eldian royal family and injecting it into a subject of Ymir allowed the latter to to turn into a pure titan. Subjects of Ymir who had consumed the spinal fluid of a royal titan shifter in other ways, such as from food or wine, could also turn into pure titans when commanded. How powerful are pure titans, and what forms do they take? Pure titans are extremely powerful as long as their foes are normal humans. They're strong against both civilians and members of the military. However, they are quite weak when compared to the titan shifters and the Ackermans. They come in various shapes and sizes and can range from somewhere around 3 to 4 meters and up to 15 meters. At one point, Reiner was able to lift a titan with his brute strength and throw it off a window because the titan was pretty short for its kind. There is also been an instance of a pure titan being 120 meters tall, thanks to Rod Ray's consuming the titan serum in an unorthodox manner. In terms of appearance, pure titans tend to have disproportionate and weird anatomies more often than not. When the Survey Corps headed out to witness the sea for the first time, they stumbled across a comparatively smaller pure titan with a huge face. It had fallen on the ground and couldn't get up due to its deformed anatomy. These titans being awkward in shape isn't an issue because they're not meant to be super combat oriented like the Titan Shifters. This is probably why Ymir does not create them as well as she creates her Shifters, as making Titans is a tedious process for her, and pure Titans don't need to come with a huge set of features like Buzz Lightyear. They can stick to being Woody, and no offense to Woody, but he loses to Buzz when it comes to special features. But the people from the verse spent a fair amount of time without access to Thunder Spears or Titan Shifters working for them, so humans fell prey to Titans like a trail of ants under a bike. Even trained men from the military couldn't stand up to pure Titans most of the time. The first expedition in Tross that the cadets from Eren's year were part of resulted
resulted in most of the humans being disgustingly overpowered and killed. Size, numbers, and an almost invulnerable body contributed to this, even though the Titans couldn't strategize or think. The smiling Titan that killed Hans and Carla Jaeger seemed to be more capable than the average pure Titan, probably because the Titan was originally a member of the Eldian royal family. Hans had a one-on-one -on -one battle with the smiling Titan, which he ended up losing despite his experience, so there you go. He might have had a better chance had they been fighting in towns or forests because those landscapes would make it easier to use ODM gear, but too bad he was up against a dangerous Titan on an open field. What makes these pure titans truly formidable is how they are mostly attacking in groups, not because they intentionally do so, but because of how pure titans operate in general. They mindlessly go after their prey, which results in many capable fighters being cornered when put against several gigantic slaughtering machines. This is why Nanaba bit the dust at Utgard Castle, despite being a skilled fighter, because she was simply overwhelmed by how many pure titans there were. There exists a distinction among these titans, with some of them being classified as aberrants or abnormal titans. Any mindless titan that behaves differently in comparison to the average titan is an abnormal titan. Some titans walk while other titans run while flailing their limbs. The latter are referred to as abnormal titans. The talking titan from the OVA about Ilse Langnar is also an abnormal titan, even though it's more humane than the average pure titan. This is because it is unnatural for these titans to try and talk, recall their memories, address someone with respect, claw at their own skin, keep a beheaded human body within a tree, and stay within a particular space even when there's prey in front of it. In this case, the titan showing signs of intelligence and sentience is what makes it abnormal. Later, we see Rod Reese's titan, which is twice as tall as the colossal titan. It doesn't portray any odd behaviors like the other abnormals, but pure titans aren't supposed to be that tall. They're also not supposed to generate heat like Rod's titan, which it does due to its size. They are not supposed to crawl on the ground with their faces down, and they are supposed to have a fully formed body instead of visible organs, because the frontal body hadn't been created yet. Because just about everything about Rod Reese's pure titan form defies the ordinary, it's an abnormal titan. Finally, we have the Wall Titan who are another group of mindless titans, but they look and act like colossal titans. Unlike the average pure titan, wall titans are about 50 meters in height, and the wielder of the founding titan, provided they have access to the founder's powers, can harden or unharden these titans to create or dismantle the walls. In function, they follow the orders of the founding titan, generate high amounts of steam due to their size, and trample everything beneath their feet, leveling the earth. Because there are thousands of them, the wall titans cannot be classified as abnormals, even when they are so different when compared to the standard pure titan. Every single titan, irrespective of its type, can be killed if its nape is sliced or destroyed. This is most probably due to the source attaching itself to Ymir's spine, and the nape is basically the part where the spine and the brain are connected. Since the power of the titans exists because of the source, a subject of Ymir who is also a titan can only cease to exist once its connection to the source has been severed. We see this with Ymir herself, who fails to die after her death and gets stuck as the coordinate in the past. This is why every titan Titan can heal and regenerate so long as their nape is intact. The constant access to the source results in Ymir restoring their bodies. What makes pure titans more vulnerable than shifters when it comes to this is the fact that, unlike shifters, they cannot make smart decisions to save themselves. Annie, Zeke, and Eren can selectively harden their napes or cover them with their hands. They can also come out of their titan bodies before the nape is completely severed and transform again. In fact, we have seen Reiner continue living after having his nape pierced, slashed, and completely blown out because he has the ability to transfer his consciousness throughout his body. In comparison, you can one-shot a pure titan from the back, which is what most capable soldiers in the story do. You don't have to be Levi or Mikasa to one-shot a pure titan. Are pure titans anatomically inclined to eat humans? Why is this a futile process? Most pure titans were created against their will. Being a pure titan isn't the greatest experience, as evidenced by soldier Ymir, who previously described it as a sort of hell that one can't come out of. The only way out is to consume a human with a titan shifter. Consuming a human in their titan form also works. This is why pure titans mindlessly slaughter humans. After Eren arrived as the attack titan for the first time, the pure titans in his vicinity ignored the soldiers and ganged up on Eren. When Annie summoned them in the forest of giant trees, they began to cannibalize her instead of the other humans. This is probably because, with the average person, there are significantly higher chances of the person not being a titan shifter. With a shifter, however, it's a given that consuming it will lead to the pure titan acquiring the ability to shift. The intent of a subject of Emir during their time of transformation may play a role in this as well. Most pure titans we see were either created at the border of paradise by the consumption 
portion of wine laced with Zeke's Titan fluid or by Aaron, using the Founder's powers to turn them into Titans. In every situation, the person either resisted their transformation or never wanted to be a pure Titan at all. However, there are some instances where an Eldian willingly became a pure Titan. They did it whenever they had to consume a shifter in their human form and gain the power of said shifter. According to the traditions we see in Attack on Titan, when the wielder of a Titan shifter closes in on the 13-year mark and nears their death, the successor is injected with the Titan serum while the predecessor is kept in front of the former. On turning into a pure Titan, its instincts obviously switch to consuming humans, and naturally they go for the one right in front of them, which allows them to turn into a Titan shifter. In these cases, we can't say whether the pure Titan knows about that person being the one with the shifter or not. Rod raises Titan's odd behavior does support the theory of intent though, because it never truly rises up until it reaches the wall. Its goal was to become a Titan, beat Eren, and reclaim the founding Titan. It is understandable as to how its anatomy contributed to the Titan not rising up and until being able to lean on the wall, however even while crawling it never changed its course or went for a different prey. This could be because Rod Reyes was quite single-minded about his plan of action, which programmed his pure Titan to go for its one goal instead of doing what every other pure Titan does. The thing is, this sucks for the average pure Titan because their slaughter is a futile process for humans as well as Titans. There are only nine Titan shifters and millions of humans. This gives every pure Titan a ridiculously slim chance when it comes to consuming a shifter. This is why Ymir is so lucky because despite spending 60 years as a Titan, most of them in hibernation, she was able to turn into a human once again after she had come across Marcel who had the jaw Titan. This also makes the bald-headed bearded Titan from season one unfortunate because he had eaten Eren, that is the guy with two Titan shifters, but he never got to acquire those powers because he didn't chew. As a result, Eren reached the Titan's belly but was still alive. It is possible that had he not burst out as the attack Titan, he could have still been alive after being regurgitated by the pure Titan. But this tendency to slaughter is what contributed to their fearful auras during the earlier parts of the story as we perceived the Titans to be monsters who killed without reason. Why were pure titans created? During the days of Eldia's peak, the pure titans most probably just came to be and went on to be used for increased military might. However, during the course of Attack on Titan's story, pure titans are intentionally created and used for war by Marley. They send some of them outside paradise to prevent its people from being able to leave, they use the others in battle. When pure titans flood the battlefield, the side utilizing them gets to eliminate enemies without having to sacrifice their main prizes. In more ways than one, if Attack on Titan was a game of chess, pure titans would be the sacrificial pawns. In season 4, Zeke turns members from the military of paradise who had consumed his spinal fluid laced wine into pure titans, simply to overwhelm the survey corps and Marley's forces so that he can come into physical contact with Eren and gain access to the paths. He does something similar in Fort Slava as he turns several Eldians into pure titans as he hops into the battle against the Mideast allied forces. The other thing that makes pure titans important is that they're extremely necessary to pass down the power of the nine titan shifters. This is what we were referring to when we called the pure titans the bread and butter of the titan world. If titans were pokemon, pure titans would be the base form of the pokemon, while the titan shifter would be the evolved version. In essence, the one lower in the hierarchy has to exist and lay the foundation for the heavyweight titans of the game to exist. The fancy powers of titan shifters cannot be passed down without the unstoppable hunger of the pure titans. Can pure titans be controlled by other titans? Their real importance to the story. Titan shifters that are being wielded by Eldians of royal blood can control pure titans. This is why Zeke's spinal fluid can turn people into titans. It also allows him to control those pure titans. It ensures that the ones being utilized in battle stick to the team they are fighting for and attack only the enemy. Otherwise, a mindless pure titan can slaughter those who are supposed to be its allies. Zeke can turn normal titans into abnormals as well. We've seen him switch a perfectly average titan Titan into an aberrant. However, being able to control these titans is not just a random feature, but one of the most important aspects of the story's narrative purpose. Eren's goal is to cause the rumbling and level the earth. Technically, that's not his exact goal, which revolves more around freedom, his desire to give his loved ones a long life, and ending the power of the titans, but Eren needs to cause the rumbling to get there. He cannot opt out of the rumbling because he has witnessed the alternate realities where he didn't cause the global genocide. In each of those realities, paradise ended up being annihilated. 
The rumbling can only be caused by Eren gaining control over the powers of Founder Ymir, which will allow him to unharden the walls, release the wall titans into the wild, and control them to systemically cause the apocalypse. Them running amok would cause him a lot more trouble. The clue that confirmed that Eren had the coordinate was his ability to temporarily control the pure titans during the finale of Season 2, which is an ability he unlocked when he came into contact with Dina Fritz. So, it's safe to say that the climax of the story requires Eren to be able to control all the titans especially the wall tights. What happens when a pure titan loses their power? We don't know how the wall titans came to be. Unlike your average pure titan, they might have never been humans. Instead, Ymir might have just created them under the command of Carl Fritz and given them a connection to her paths. On the other hand, the pure titans are humans who cannot shift back into their human forms. Connie goes through a lot for years due to his mother turning into a pure titan. Naturally, he seeks to feed the wielder of a shifter to her to turn her back into a human, and yet always fails to do so. Eventually, Aaron turns everyone into pure tights, and the likes of Jean and Connie becoming titans leaves a sour taste in our mouths. However, Eren seeks to bring an end to the power of the titans and free Eldians from their miserable fates that come with having the ability to turn into monsters. After Eren is separated from the source, the source is destroyed, Eren is killed, and founder Ymir, and by extension all of her subjects, are freed. This freedom results in Eldians not being bound to their unusual anatomies anymore since Ymir and the coordinate have finally ceased to exist. The wall titans just stop being functional probably because they were never humans to begin with, unlike the standard pure titans. It is theoretically possible that they were created with the souls of deceased Eldians, much like the titan shifters from the past who had appeared during the Battle of Heaven and Earth, which gave us the infamous Okapai Sea. This meant that the wall titans were always dead, or rather devoid of an original physical form following their conception. Those who had turned into pure titans reverted back to their human forms. Those who were titan shifters lost access to their titan powers, but they also managed to avoid the fate of dying early, thus being freed from the curse of Ymir. Marvelous Verdict Pure Titans make their entry as formidable enemies who seem to have a great upper hand on the cast, but eventually become less and less dangerous as we get access to bigger and badder Titan shifters as well as the Akrams. However, they continue to be one of the most important types of Titan in the story due to everything their anatomy helps to achieve. Want to become a Titan shifter? Gotta be a pure Titan first. Need an army? Gotta get them pure Titans. Want to flatten the world? Baby, you need pure Titans Ultra Pro Max, aka the Wall Titans. Without the pure Titans, Marley never would have been able to seclude the population of Paradise in the first place, let alone for a century, making them an absolute necessity for this story to even begin. And with that, today's video comes to an end. Did you enjoy it? If so, don't forget to leave a comment down below and share your thoughts. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.